Al Hariri has written in his recent book. In our global economy, we have seen millions lifted from poverty. And actually, we have the capacity as a human race, a capacity never seen before in human history, wealth, technical know-how, experience, to eliminate poverty, illiteracy, contagious diseases, solve major challenges such as climate change, and TechFugees knows this. I do believe in technology. Innovations for refugees, which you've been working on, cash transfers technology, online lending platforms, crowd mapping, crowdsourcing, apps for information sharing, translations, new housing options, online education, MOOCs, more transparent distribution and use of humanitarian aid, blockchain and IDs, integrating into new neighborhoods, machine learning algorithms and AI to improve responsiveness to crises or to find jobs when resettled, prevention or early warning for conflict and human rights violations, democratizing mapping as well as citizens' journalism. All these are new possibilities that you are bringing to the fore. Yet biases exist in some of these technological uh, uh, inventions and innovations. The Toronto Declaration, which was organized by Amnesty International, talks about the need for a Hippocratic oath in the tech world, sort of a do-no-harm uh, policy. And refugees are vulnerable. Blockchain biometrics databases can be tracked or hacked, and often used for the opposite purpose by authoritarian regimes, such as that in Myanmar or Syria, where actually persecution is the goal. So I would appeal to our tech, tech refugees to explore ways of making technologies affordable, accessible, but also safe for those who are forcibly displaced, ensuring that we have the highest standards of privacy and security in storing data. But why aren't we moving faster? Well, one reason is that we're also witnessing the biggest concentration of wealth and therefore power in the hands of the few. The 1% having more than 50% of the bottom of the global population. And this is impacting our politics. Powerful lobbies, corporations, larger and more powerful than countries, money and corruption have captured poli politics, media, institutions, and I've seen this. In the Greek financial crisis, this was very much the cause of it. At the same time, our institutions are still basically national, yet the challenges are global. For example, tax havens. No one government can tackle this problem without cooperation. But we're losing precious resources that would otherwise be invested in education, welfare, research, fighting human suffering, such as the refugee issue. I don't need to go into all the statistics, but we're seeing an increasingly, and this will be this is the trend, uh, the conflict and persecution will be bringing more displaced every year. 68.5 million at the end of 2017, more than the number, the greatest since World War II. An increase of 30.6 million of internal displacements in 2017 because of conflict. And those who are facing acute hunger globally, largely due to conflict and instability, reached almost 74 million across 18 countries in 2017. So war and conflict are destroying more lives and livelihoods, pushing more people towards despair, driving more people, despite dangers that are often mortal, to try their chances elsewhere. And the increasing impact, of course, of climate change will add to the scale and urgency of this challenge. However, refugees are woefully under, uh, under-supported, some of the countries that are hosting refugees are some of the poorest in the world, and yet we have the possibility to solve these issues. In the European Union, yes, we could quite easily deal with the recent crisis. One million sounds a large number, but in a continent of close to 600 million people, we could have absorbed that number if we worked together, if we shared responsibilities as the New York Declaration uh, stated in 2016. We could be politically innovative, why not think out of the box? You actually, refugees and migrants, they could be the new Europeans. They could be the actual Europeans, not having some root in one of the countries in Europe. We should give them a passport, a European passport. Let's create a European passport for refugees and migrants. Let them vote. Let them vote in local elections. Let them vote in European elections. Why don't we let them be part of building our union? Why not give them, create an Erasmus program for training them? Let them choose where they want to go and learn to be part of our growth 
uh, and sustainable development. We could do this, and that means that we do have, we can find innovative solutions. I could go into many other ideas. But what I'm saying is at the core, the world is not really facing a refugee crisis so much as a crisis of leadership, a deficit of vision, humanity, and solidarity, a surfeit of indifference, cynicism, and greed. And if we fail, we will have huge consequences. Well, why is there a failure? Well, I'd like to appeal to you and end with this, with three narratives I think we have, a little bit simplistic, but um, I think it makes the point quite clearly. Tech has moved the world, but if we want to, the world to move in the right direction, we need a new politics, promote the values that you espouse here, we espouse here, as well as new narratives around the issues and even, of course, around the refugee problem. I see three modes of narratives which we are, we are caught in today. One is, I call it the suicide mode. Nothing can change through politics, things will solve themselves, ah, things are not so bad, or even if we can't do much, I'll just resign to my own corner, my own cocoon. That's sort of a fatalistic view. The second mode of politics I call the assassination mode. Some call it populism, I think it's much worse. We don't look at the real problems. If we are losing jobs, it's not that education costs too much for our families. If we don't have good healthcare services, it's not that the big pharma corporations are making huge profits at our expense. If we don't have public investment, it's not that there is huge inequality. If we have extreme weather, it's not climate change or the oil industry. If we have refugees, it's not because of the repeated invasions of Iraq, Afghanistan or Libya. Blame the Chinese. Blame the Hondurans who are part of ISIS. Blame the Latinos who are mobsters or rapists. Blame the scientists who are lying about the climate. Blame the enemy of the, uh, the, enemy of the nation, CNN, or Hillary, or Barrack. Bomb them, wipe them out. This is the assassination mode. And it is real, and it is dangerous. And the refugees are one of the victims. But we all are victims of this rhetoric in the end, as we will be the other. If we do not go along with this authoritarian narrative, if we do not fit into the concept of what they want as being proper in identities. But then there's a third mode. I call it giving birth mode. Birth, of course, is a natural phenomenon, but in a society, as in human beings, it has its pains, its expectations, its surprises. As with a newborn, giving birth is a collective, a communal event, one of creation, learning, we need to nurture the new, growing up with risks, even mistakes, which we forgive. We continue to love and have companionship. Birth is painful and yet is a happy event. A refugee is a person who wants to be reborn. A new life, a new start. At the same time, a refugee is a change maker. By definition, a refugee is leaving because she cannot survive in her country. He, she wants change. In the new environment, refugees have at least two identities, many more. They compare, they have to evaluate what I cherish from my tradition and what I can bring to my new home, what I can learn from my new country. Maybe that is why they have much in common with millennials who travel physically but also virtually, always moving from one to another world. Refugees may be in extreme situations, but they actually highlight deficiencies in our whole societies. If there are long lines in the hospital in Lesbos, I was talking about that with Vasily here yesterday, who works with tech refugees, because of bad management, it is not the refugees' fault. We need to innovate our health services for all. It's a problem for all of us. And technology can help us if there is a will. If there's trafficking and corruption in our bureaucracies, the refugee issue may highlight it, but it is a wider issue that affects us all. In fact, refugees have more in common and more common interest with the disadvantaged or average citizens in our societies than those who want to represent them through populism. And dealing with the refugee issue, we actually are bettering our whole societies. So a different narrative would be to see refugees as an opportunity, an ally in changing our societies for the better, in learning from each other, in being part of the solution rather than part of the problem. Investing in refugees has one more very important aspect, aspect talking to Yama yesterday from Afghanistan, 
we had a common experience. He goes back from the Netherlands to his village in Afghanistan to make change. He knows things can be better. He sees it daily in Eindhoven. He is a change agent for his country. I did the same as many other Greek refugees, returning confident that Greece can change, working for change in our country. What better investment if the developed countries invest in refugees as the future architects and engineers of Libya, Syria, Yemen, Afghanistan, Iraq, or wherever, so that they can build a better, more just, more tolerant and diverse, more transparent society when the conflicts are over. A final appeal. I know the tech community often does not like politics. I understand. But the ancient Greek concept of politics was our belief that we can actually take our fate into our hands, change it for the better, collectively and democratically. That is the kind of politics we need to revive. I'm not asking you to vote for one or another party. I'm asking you to be active, actually, tech these activists are active. But this has to spread. Don't be absent, as in the Brexit vote. As we approach very crucial elections, such as in the EU in eight months, the US or elsewhere, we need to be active. There are those who espouse the rhetoric of hate and xenophobia. We must isolate them, yet embrace those who they are trying to convince. We must support those who believe in diversity, critical thinking, free press, collective wisdom, justice and equality, and sustainable societies. And believe me, don't look for saviors. Quick fix solutions also aren't always possible. It is about the community, as Mike said earlier, the people. You are the solution. And TechFugees has proven it has the spirit and the tech capacity to spread a message of humanism and hope around the world. I wish you all the best of success. Thank you. Thank you so much, George. George has been a great supporter of uh, TechFugees since we started, and in fact, completely randomly turned up at our meetup last year. <laughs> In, uh, uh, during Web Summit. So amazing, so, so glad you could join us. Thank you so much. Um, can we get um, Carl, Thierry, Megan, and Munza on, up on stage? Get, come and 